And after all of that, after all of that, and there is more, there are still folks wringing their hands, crossing their arms, tuning out, saying they plan to sit this election out to prove a point? Well, let me tell you who isn't tuning out. Many of the folks who served closest to Trump and saw the danger firsthand. His former vice president, almost half of his former cabinet members, the growing list of four-star generals and Republican governors and senators and former House members, all of whom are not public, publicly supporting his candidacy the second time around. You all hear what I said? They are saying, no, thank you. Many are speaking out. His chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, for example, said, and these are his words, that Trump is fascist to the core. His Joint Chief of Staff. These folks know that nothing this man says or does is funny in any way. So I hope you'll forgive me if I'm a little frustrated that some of us are choosing to ignore Donald Trump's gross incompetence while asking Kamala to dazzle us at every turn. I, I hope that you'll forgive me if I'm a little angry that we are indifferent to his erratic behavior, his obvious mental decline, his history as a convicted felon, a known, a known slumlord, a predator found liable for sexual abuse, all of this, while we pick apart Kamala's answers from interviews that he doesn't even have the courage to do, y'all. So, I am praying that those of us contemplating voting for Trump or not voting at all will snap out of whatever fog we are in. I am praying that we consider the decades of sacrifice and struggle by all of our ancestors, the folks who marched and sacrificed and shed their blood for us. We have to ask ourselves, is a vote for Trump or no vote at all the way we honor their lives? And if that's the case, well, that surely doesn't sound like freedom to me. Because let me tell you, in any other profession or arena, Trump's criminal track record and amoral character would be embarrassing, shameful, and disqualifying. So, I hope that you will forgive me if I am worried that we will blow this opportunity to finally turn the page on the ugliness once and for all. Because believe me, if Donald Trump is president again, at some point or another, that ugliness will touch all of our lives. And it will not matter what you look like, how you worship, who you love, or how you vote. If you don't make six or eight or 12 figures, if you're not famous, if you criticize or disagree with him in any way, if he doesn't view you as his equal or relevant to his ambitions, I promise you, he will not think about you when he gets into the Oval Office. And that will have real consequences for all of us.